Welcome to The Chair. My name is Amy Bauman, and we meet here every Tuesday, unpacking which chair we're sitting in, learning to be more like Jesus, discovering new revelations, and hopefully having a little fun along the way. We are in a brand new month back on the set, and I am so excited to be sharing the things that we're going to be talking about over the next four weeks. This is Mental Health Awareness Month, which is really, it's a spot in my heart where I am really passionate about making sure other people believe and know who they are in Christ, know their identity, and know that Jesus is stronger than depression. Jesus is bigger than anxiety. Jesus is larger than anxiousness and all the things that we can experience while we live in this broken world. So this month, this month we are going to be focusing some special attention on looking at Mental Health Awareness Month, but not doing it in a negative way, but doing it in a positive way, looking at new mercies, new covenants, new teachings, new ways that we can be more like Jesus. And today we're going to kick that off and we're going to be the new. Let's take a look at this introductory video to get us started in this new season. Sorry, I was really jamming to that video and that music. Isn't that an exciting way to like think about May, uh, starting into a new season? I mean, spring feels like it's finally here. April had some clouds and some rain and some snow and some cold weather, but I feel like we've really crossed into that promise of, of warm weather and summertime's not around, not too far around the corner. and. Um, just the possibilities and the excitement and the joy. And yeah, April was a bit challenging for me. There were some really hard moments that I had to kind of press into and deal with all of the feelings and emotions that I was feeling with. But I just feel like, whew, May, there's just so much promise. And I'm so excited about what's happening this month as we kind of recognize Mental Health Awareness Month and what that means for me and what I want to share with you. Now we uh, ended last week our series, um, Understanding Our Emotions, and we ended it on understanding the difference between sadness and depression. And thank you to all of you that had sent me messages and just let me know that that really meant a lot to you, that you really enjoyed uh, just understanding the difference between sadness and depression and you could really use it for your life. And so praise the Lord, that's what it's about, right? Uh, getting these truths into us, renewing our minds and having a better understanding of, of those feelings and emotions that we experience. And so I really want to just focus, not necessarily um, on sadness, depression, but I really want to use last week as a springboard to kind of launch us into this fresh new way to look at some of the things that we experience and and look at it as, as how God looks at it, right? Uh, His mercies are new every morning and 
and he wants us to have this hope in him. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to have happiness and, and he wants us to make sure that we're focusing on the right things and, and which, you know, mostly is his word. So when I, when I look back at my life and those 17 years that I struggled with mental health, with bipolar disorder, with depression and anxiety and OCD and anxiousness and the manics, the, the highs and the lows, across the board, when I look at that, there was nothing new about it, right? It was this season of stagnation. It was the season of recycle. And when I say recycle, it's, it's just the enemy used the same lies all the time to keep me stuck. And so really over those 17 years, the world felt like it moved around me, but there was no growth for me. There was no moving forward. There was no revelation. There was no um, new ideas, new truths that the Lord, that I was receiving from the Lord because I was stuck. I was really just stuck in this mire, in this dirt, in this uh, pit. And I could just see sunlight and the days passing uh, from, from my, from my pit as I watched each day go by. And I lost so much time. So when I think about the enemy and and that he's here to steal, kill, and destroy, there's also stagnation. There's also recycle. There's also just being stuck in these situations, in these seasons of sadness and depression and anxiety and anxiousness. And, and I know you're out there. I know that you're feeling it. I know that you feel stuck in these emotions, in, in, in the season that you're going through and, and you're just wondering, how do I get out? How do I rise above? How do I get myself out of this hole that I've been living in? And so when we focus on what the enemy is doing, I just, I just want you to look inside and see that right now you're stuck that it's stagnation, that it's, that you're not moving anywhere and, and recognize that that's exactly what the enemy wants for you. That's exactly where the enemy wants to keep you is stuck in this, in this sadness and, and doesn't want you to go forward. And so as soon as you can recognize that, that, okay, I'm stuck, I'm not going anywhere, that everything I'm listening to is just this recycled garbage from the enemy, then, then is when you can make a change. That is when, when you can recognize that that's what you're, what you're doing and what you're going through. That's when God can come in and, and do something new in you because you've, you've now, you're not just going through the motions, oblivious to any new truth. You're, you're now recognizing that it's a battle. And so the very first thing that we need to do is to just recognize what's happening, right? And allow the Lord uh, to, to speak to us. Now, one of the biggest things that I say about on this show and even in my preaching and in my teaching is that God's truth needs to be our GPS. God's truth needs to be where we go to for, for our truth and, and, and how do we navigate this world. But you can't just go there and read the words. They can't be empty words that you're just reading and you're just going through the motions. You have to believe. You have to trust and believe that that God's truth is powerful and is alive and is this sword that you're going to pick up every time you need to fight the enemy. This is what you're going to use to fight. And so if we look at some of God's truth, Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
Why do you think he asks us the question, do you not perceive it? That's my whole point is we can be stuck forever just going through the motions, being recycled, listening to all of the, the old lies and all of the garbage. And if we don't perceive God's truth and believe it, that we're not going to move forward. And, and he's saying, I will make a way in the wilderness and, and rivers in the desert. I know I came out of those 17 years just so thirsty, needing God to refill me and renew me and, and quench this, this thirst that I had. And, and that's what he's saying and that's what he'll do. He did it for me. He's going to do it for you too. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. It doesn't say anything that if you have been recycled over the last 17 years and living in a pit under stagnation that you will feel better. No, that's not what he's saying here. He's saying the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. New mercies, new revelations, new truth, a new path, a new feeling of, of hopefulness, not hopelessness. Isaiah 42, 9, behold, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them, new things. You hear the theme here? It's all new. Ezekiel 36, 26, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart flesh. I can so resonate with that because for all those years where I was living in this pit, in this stagnation, in this sadness, I had a heart of stone. I just went through the motions. I never really felt anything real, real love, real joy, real peace. I was just feeling the, the real feelings that I was feeling with the hopelessness and the despair and that this was never going to get better and that I was never going to be happy. When he invades you and comes into your heart and does this new thing, he gives you this heart of flesh that you're able to feel again, that you're not just going through the motions, that you're actually feeling love and joy and peace and wholeness and healing and you can have fun with your kids and, and, and laugh with your husband and, and make fun of yourself and realize that there's this side of life that you had been missing and that it was, you were missing all of the joy that God wanted to give you. A new thing is what the Lord wants to do. He is constantly working, constantly moving, constantly making a way in the wilderness to, to give us new life. And of course, there's never been that bigger example of, of new life than what Jesus did for us on the cross. When he died and, and went down into the pits of hell and came back again, he gave us new life, resurrection, uh, new ways to experience uh, wholeness and healing. He conquered sin and death and in doing that gave us this new uh, this new life that we can have, that we can take advantage of, that we can participate in. But of course, the enemy, you know, he doesn't want us to know about that. He doesn't want us to experience that. He wants to take us off the path and have us wander around this world full of anxiousness and depression and sadness, forgetting who we truly are in Christ, which is sons and daughters of the Most High King. If you want newness, if you want to experience all that God has planned for you, recognize that it's a battle. Recognize that we're fighting against the enemy and, and believe and receive God's truth as your word. It's your true north. Read it and believe it. Also, uh, new mercies each day. 
give yourself some grace. If you have a bad day, if it's not everything that, that you wish you could have done, that you were operating in the flesh and, and you yelled at your husband and yelled at your kids, let me tell you, when you wake up the next day, you're never going to get that day back. You're never going to be able to go back and fix that day, but you do have a new, new opportunity to, to take this day and make it into everything that God wants you to make it into. Say your sorries, ask for forgiveness. Don't do those things again. Return to the path, do a new thing. Every morning there are new opportunities to step out in faith. And again, you can't go backward. You can't get those days back. And if there was a missed opportunity on, on Monday, well then Tuesday is another opportunity for you to talk to that friend, call that person, send that card, bring that meal. We always have a new opportunity. Each day is filled with his new mercies. And again, the enemy wants us to believe that, that everything that has happened to us in the past, all those wrong choices, all of those decisions, all of that sin, he wants us to carry around those, those pieces of luggage filled with, with all of those things that we did that we can't get back. And he wants us just to take it into each day. As a, as a constant reminder of who we are, let me tell you, when Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again, he certainly didn't want us walking around with pieces of luggage filled with resentment, filled with bitterness, anger, wrong choices, things that we did wrong. No, he wants us to lay all of that luggage down at the foot of the cross and step into life with open hands, ready to receive everything that the Lord wants to give us. Each day is filled with new opportunities, new mercies, and don't take that old luggage with you. He loves you so much, and he, he wants you to fully embrace the newness and everything that he is doing and step out into that and, and do what? Do what we're commissioned to do, which is further God's kingdom, share the gospel, be his hands and his feet. And if, if we can just step out as our authentic selves with open hands, trusting and believing in God's word, knowing that we have a plan and a purpose for our life, being able to have fun and laugh at ourselves and say, you know what? Okay, today is another day, a new opportunity for me to shine brightly for him. We are just going to be able to have this explosion of love on the scene filled with forgiveness and, and kindness and, and new opportunities to share this love with other people. It's contagious. And, and I, I just pray that you can kind of feel some of that today, right? This is contagious. This, is, this new thing that the Lord wants to do can happen to all of us if we just trust him, if we just believe him, if we just have faith. I hope that today, after watching the video and hearing some of what I've said, that you will be encouraged, that you'll know that God wants to do this new thing in you starting right now. And if you'll let me, I want to I wanna pray for you and I want you to be able to step into that fullness that God has so that he can do a new thing so that you can be the new starting right now. Father God, I thank you. I thank you ultimately for, for how you are always doing a new thing, that you're always working, that you're always moving, that you're always wanting people to feel your love and joy and forgiveness and peace and, and to share that. And I just pray for each person that's watching right now, that's listening right now, Lord, that you will speak directly to their hearts, that they will put away the things of old, that they'll put down the luggage that they've been carrying, that they will no longer pick up the lies that they've been listening to and, and thinking about and, and standing on, 
and that they will stand on your truth, that they will believe uh, everything that you say in your word and that they will trust that you, Lord, want to do a new thing in their life. We cancel the plans of the enemy and stand as a united body, all believing the same thing and, and believing that we are not going to listen to his lies anymore, that we're going to step out into the fullness that you have for us and we're going to fight and war side by side, believing in your truth, carrying your sword of truth, Lord, and stepping into each day, no matter what comes our way. I just pray that you will heal uh, any brokenness that, that they are they're thinking, that you will give them peace and healing and wholeness and joy, and that they will uh, just receive the new things that you want to do in them. Lord, we thank you for who you are, for how much you love us, and, and we thank you for the plans and the purposes that you have for us, and we just step into that fully today, receiving every good gift, every blessing, every measure, we just pray that you will be with us the rest of this week, stepping with us each step, one step at a time. And we just love you, Lord. And we, we give you our lives. We give you our days. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus who saves. Amen. There are so many exciting things happening this month, so I want to uh, give you a, a couple of those things. So my book, my very first book, In Over My Head, which is my story of healing and redemption and how God moved me from 17 years of having bipolar disorder into this life that I have now, is now on sale, $4.99. That includes free shipping. That's the price of a cup of coffee or a sandwich. If you have been just hesitating on wanting to get this book or buy this book for someone who needs it, now's the time to do it. The entire month of May, it's only $4.99 out the door and I'll mail it to wherever it needs to go all over the United States. And so take advantage of that book. Also, throughout the entire month of May, if you go to my website, there's going to be a daily devotional specifically tied to the things that we can experience, those feelings and emotions, uh, depression, and how do we battle, how do we fight. So uh, you'll just click on a daily devotional, which is at amybauman.com, and follow along, and hopefully that will give you some extra encouragement. I have an exciting announcement coming next week. So stay tuned for the chair, and that will be announced next week um, at 10 a.m. And then also next week, I will be letting you know about a new class that will be on my website that will be free. It's just diving deeper into the struggles that we face with depression and anxiety and anxiousness. So stay tuned for that information next week. And... Um, I also want to give a special shout out to all you moms out there as we come up on Mother's Day. And from experience, I know that mothers is just not a biological representation, that there's aunts and grandmas and sisters and cousins and stepmoms and all of you that, that help as uh, you look at families and, and what that all looks like. And so just a special uh, thank you to you moms out there, no matter what that looks like. And, and thank you for all that you do and for the blessings that you are. And I want to leave you with this uh, special video for Mother's Day because I see you. I see you out there. Until next time, uh, be blessed. And just thanks again for joining me today. Have a great week. Hey, I see you, Mom. I see you waiting in the car line. I see you waking up early. Going the extra mile. Doing those little things you seldom get credit for. Yeah, I see you. I see you working the job. Running the errands. And cooking those meals. Or at least ordering the takeout. Oh, I see you. I even see what most of the world misses. The prayers, the thoughts. The quantum tasking. The working the job while planning the whole day. The whole week ahead. Only a mom could do this. Actively completing one task while the next four tasks are simultaneously being sorted out. I see you scoffing at the phrase, out of sight, out of mind. Knowing that phrase was definitely coined by a dad because that's not how moms do it. We don't get the gift of out of mind. 
Because who else would think about these things? Who else is going to worry if she's eating her veggies at school? Or how his friends treat him? Or how he treats his friends? Or if the permission slip was signed? Or if this F will be the straw that breaks the college scholarships back? Or if his future spouse is going to judge you for his dental hygiene? Or if... If you're giving your kids a good view of God. Or a bad view of God. Or view of God at all. You mean the God who created life? Who not only knows every hair on your head, but also knows what you're going to ask before you even speak a word. A loving parent who intimately knows their children. Sounds an awful lot like a mom, don't you think? I'd say you're a beautiful reflection of God's love. And maybe this is exactly the way you show God to your kids. These thoughts don't distract us from the job. It's what makes us awesome at it. Yeah, I see you, Mom. I see you. And God, God sees you.